Welcome to How It Works with Holger. This is part two of Data Grids with Tabulator in TMS Web Core. I initially called it Tabular, that was a mistake of mine. Tabulator is what the JavaScript library is called, and it shows tabular data. That's how I got confused. In this episode, we're ready to extend the simple example that we created in part one to a more complex example which shows data that has been retrieved from a web service. We're going to use a public web service that is not requiring authentication. So this example is really, really easy to reproduce and also stay till the end of the video because you'll get all the information where to get the source code, where you can read up a summary and so on. However, I highly recommend watching part one first to get introduced to the tabulator in TMS Web Core. In this second part, we'll build the more complicated tabular web service example. We'll retrieve data from a web service. It's gonna be the Apple iTunes search API, which allows you to search for CDs, for DVDs, for Blu-rays, for movies, for music, almost anything that is being sold on iTunes, more or less, or the App Store, what it's called in modern days. Still, this API is great because you can use it without signing up with Apple, without doing any authentication. Everything is done using a search query inside of the URL of your request. So that makes it the ideal candidate for a simple example that teaches you how you can request data from a web service and then present it in a grid. Of course, you don't have to present it in a grid. So this example is really, really good if you need to interact with the web service and retrieve data. I just wanna point out this web service is a web service from a third party provider. And that means we cannot use any of the X data controls on the client side in TMS Web Core. So this video is not only applicable if you have an X data license. A lot of developers still think if you do TMS Web Core, if you want to do web services, you need to use X data. That is not correct. X data is a tool that allows you to write your own custom web service APIs and so much more. But in this case, we just want to get data from the internet from another web service that is publicly available and thus we don't need x data and in consequence you don't need to license x data if you want to use this tms web core comes with all you need to extract data from the internet i've shown this in part one but just as a reminder we can filter the data right here, typing Jedi, for example. And in addition, Tabular also offers filter for a limited amount of different categories. For example, all these genres here are not like the title, different titles. These are always from a certain set of genre. And thus, if you type documentary, you get documentary as a choice. And also, if you don't type anything in just one, you here see that you get these two instead of when it comes here with a title, you do not get any suggestions because the idea is there is an unlimited amount of titles, but only a very select amount of genre available. In addition to filtering, you can also sort by date. For example, here it all started with Star Wars and New Hope or the other way around, it ended with the Rise of Skywalker. That was the last movie in the series. And of course, you can also sort by genre and in reverse order. And all that is supported by the JavaScript framework automatically, as well as, and this is, I guess, what everybody is most excited about, images. How does that work? And let's jump right into it. The main form, just as unattractive as before this, just the button, the T web button instance that is linked to the HTML design that we're going to look at next. However, let me put one component in focus first. TWeb HTTP request. That is the component that you can use to communicate with other HTTP or HTTPS 
endpoints on the internet. You can issue HTTP requests using this control, meaning you can trigger GET requests as well as POST requests, but also any other of the requests that are defined in the HTTP protocol. And even if you have a very, very antiquated server that defined its own verbs, you can even do that. You can set it to HTTP custom, and then you can define a custom command. For example, I don't know what that command would be, yell or whatever. You know, you can define any custom command in there. So we are going to use for the service from Apple, we're going to use an get request. That's how they defined it. And the URL that we're going to use, um, let me focus on that by opening a browser window right here. So I can make it a little bit bigger. So the URL is divided into the base URL that you want to search for something that is from the Apple documentation. Where do you find the documentation? Well, that's literally depends on the service that you want to use. We're using the Apple iTunes search API. So if we go here, this is the documentation for the Apple search API. And on the left, you see how do you search for a certain thing? And it lists all the different parameters that are available. I'm taking a lot of time off this video. You can accommodate yourself with this information at your own pace. Just be aware you can look for movies, podcasts, music, music videos, audiobooks, short films, TV shows, software, ebooks. And if you don't want to limit it, you can literally look for all, then your return result will have all of them. But of course, you will have to look for the media type in there, what the actual return type is. And this API gives you so much more to look for with regards to ratings and it, it it's really a good API to start with if you want to learn interacting with web service APIs because you don't need to authenticate. Everything is controlled using a URL um, which you learn pretty simple. For example, here's the search example and they give you the example in order to look for all the Jack Johnson audio and video content, you say this URL search question mark after a question mark in a URL, you specify query parameters term equals Jack plus Johnson. That means multiple terms, Jack and Johnson, you specify with a plus in between. This is the warning. And this is why I didn't start off with us entering a search text and then passing it on. This text here has to be encoded in a specific way, it cannot contain any special characters because all the requests are handled through URLs. For example, here you limit the search results to 25. It's an additional parameter that is done using the ampersand. And then more specific, here we look for Jim Jones and then the country country is Canada. And this is how you can get more and more specific for um, your search queries. How do you specify the result? Well, we're going to look at that <clears throat> in detail now. So the query that we're going to use is we're going to look for this term Star Wars, Star Plus Wars, only in the country United States. This is not directed at the content that is being delivered. No, this is actually directed at the store that is being used from Apple, meaning Apple has stores in, in Germany, in the United States, and these are all different, uh, all deliver different content. So that's where you pick which one of the stores you would like to use. And we're all only interested in movies. We don't want any of the Star Wars TV series, for example. So with that, that is the query that we are going to feed into our application. And I'm going to, to run it again so we can investigate the result that is being sent back. So we press F12 and I'll show you how you get there to request the result. But on the network tab, we actually see the search that was executed in a whole lot of JSON. And that is something with a giant API like this one that has so much information in there. And the only thing you can do at this point is either use a tool 
Fiddler, Postman, or from TMS REST Inside to format this JSON document so you can read it easier. And also to look into the documentation, which are the things that are being returned. The things that we're going to use are obviously the cover image, the title, the release date, and the genre. And those are the things that you have to find in there. For example, the um, artist name would be the uh, director in this case, if it is a movie, you also have like a description of the movie and all those kind of things. What I did, I copied it into Notepad++ and then looked at all the different attributes that were available. And that is literally um, the first step that you have to take. What kind of information do you want to use in your application? Okay. And tab. And the great thing is with tabulator, you do not have to parse this content yourself. You can simply pass these results here in the array results right here. You can pass them to the tabulated component and just tell this component which properties you want to use as different columns. And even better, and let me copy this into a Notepad++ and we can talk about it easier. So I pasted it into Notepad Plus and then I have a JSON viewer that allows me to format it. And then it's much, much easier to read, I would assume. And here's all the different attributes for all the different movies. Let's go right to the top. And we see we get a result count as the first property and we get a results property which consists of an array. And then we have for each of the movies a different object with different properties. So this is the first movie. Um, this is a movie collection, for example, and the, or it's part of a collection, but here this is the track name. So track name is actually what we would use. If you wonder what is the track censored name, well, there are movies that have like language that is inappropriate for children. So you would always use track name if you want basically the non uh, a censored name. The track censored name would be appropriate for kids um, where curse words and stuff like that would be removed or overwritten with asterisk, stuff like that. And the next one that is interesting to us is the artwork. So these are the different cover images with 30 to 30 pixels, 60 to 60 pixels, 100 to 100 pixels. And they contain the URL of these images. So if you click on one of these, for example, and follow the link in your web browser, we get the cover image of that particular movie. That's how the web works. You get a link to the image because this image is available on the internet. And that is what the tabulator component can actually use. It will query this URL in order to get the image. And you can see this in our TMS Web Core application quite easily. Here is where the content is being requested from the web server. Then we process it and assign it to the tabulator component. And that's when the tabulator component starts to query all the different images as soon as they're being shown in the grid. So that's automatic. We get that for free. That's the amazing thing. We don't have to implement anything. The only thing we do is Hey, this first column with the, co uh, with the cover is pointing to one of the artwork properties. And that's it. And then you can simply pick and choose if you want to show the prize. Or if here is the release date, note that the release date is correctly formatted by Apple in the, according to the ISO standard. So again, we can simply pass it to tabulator and it knows how to handle it. And same here for country you can use. You can, and here is the genre primary genre name is the field here are descriptions and we're already at the end of the movie that is in there picking from these properties um, is all we have to do when we have the result but how do we get this result in our application in our tms web core application so we assign to the request the url property right here and that's all i did i assign this URL with the search term and then set the response type to RTJSON. I want to be able to handle this 
like a JSON object what I get back. Be, just be careful, it's just is for the technicalities how you can access the object that is being returned by the component that has nothing to do with your actual HTTP request. If you wanna influence the format from the server, for example, the Apple API only can do, as far as I remember, JSON. Back in the day, it was XML. So what you had to do, you had to specify here in the headers, you had to say for except, for example, application JSON or application XML. If you don't send anything, you get JSON back in the case of Apple. For other services, this might be different. This headers property, this is where you make the specifications. The same if you have basic authentication, you can specify a password and a user and uh, sending post data is made very, very easy because you also have a property for that. Okay, so URL is being set. You trigger the request and how do you get the response? Well, there's more than one way with TMS Web Core. Back in the day, when TMS Web Core started, um, there was no way um, other than using an event, meaning you trigger the request, you tell TMS Web Core, hey, get me the content from this URL. It was an asynchronous process, and as soon as there was a reply from the other side, either, for example, error, or there was an actual response, you had to implement these events. But with the newer versions of TMS Web Core, this has become much, much simpler. And this is the approach I'm going to show you. If you're interested in going into detail on all of these, please consider purchasing my book about TMS Web Core because there I explain it with great more detail about the different formats that are being returned, about the headers, and all these things are dealt with in very much detail, and also the different options, how you can request data from the internet using closures, events, or this async await um, approach, which might not be the best all the time, but in this case, it's, it's the easiest by far. So we define a method which is called request data. And this will be the method that we will trigger when we want to request the data from the web service. And this async custom attributes tells TMS Web Core or the compiler of TMS Web Core, hey, we want to be able to use await. That's a new thing in TMS Web Core and allows us to get things from the internet and store it, store the response in an object without having to write this in an event. Back in the day, you issued the request and then this line would be executed immediately before the reply was received. If you use await, this line will only be left if the response from the web server has been received. Meaning, you can be assured that L response will contain a value when this line is reached. This was not the case before without await. Without await, this request would be issued and then the next line would be executed immediately and you would have to receive and process the reply in a different event, for example. So now this is really, you can read it, this line and then this line next. This is literally how you can read it now. Also, there is no concern that await blocks your application. This just means we wait for the response to be returned. That doesn't mean your application will be blocked. Also not the case. So L response is a special object from uh, that's part of TMS Web Core, and it has a property status which gives you this HTTP status response code. Again, the book and the documentation has all the details on these, but 200 in this case means the request was successful. Again, looking in the documentation from Apple tells us that this request is uh, successful if 200 is returned, and that means we can process the result in a different method. I put it in a different method just to keep the request data stuff short. L, the, the type is something you have to learn, TJS XML HTTP request. It's very similar to the one that is being used in JavaScript name-wise. I think in JavaScript it's just, used, uh, it's just called XLM HTTP request. So very easy to remember if you have some background in JavaScript. Okay, so process result is a method and that takes 
again, that type. And I log this result to the console. So if you actually go back to the application and look at the console here, this is where I log the result as it comes in. We see that we have a property, result count 13, results, first object, second object. So the console is actually a good thing to use if you work with external APIs to look at what, what objects look like. And much, much easier maybe than using the Notepad Plus to get an idea. However, at that point, you already need to have a result in your application. Um, the Notepad++ might be the thing you do before you actually have your application implemented like this. And note that we take a response, which is the TJS XML HTTP request, and that has a property called response. And this response has the type that you specified right here for the response type. Okay, that's, that's the key thing where the JSON type comes in in this case. Okay, and now I assign this, and what do I assign this to? Well, I assign it to a TJS array, meaning I want the array of all the different movies. So what I want in this case is basically this right here. This is what I wanna to assign to F data. So going back here, I say self, F data is TJS array, it's a cast. And what is a TJS array? Well, it is the, it contained in a response response. I cast that to a TJS object and then access the results property. Looking again here, this whole thing is an object. And then I access the results property of that object and cast it to TJS array because I know it is an array. And Going from here, I have in F data an array with my data. And that's all the parsing I need to do because now I can hand this off to tabular. And that is the final part of this video. How do you bring tabular into the mix? Because in the first part we've learned you can set the columns and then you assign your data. How are we going to do it this time? Well, very similar. Again, we pass the data over here and this is literally copy paste from the documentation as I've said before. The data once again is the data that I pass in and then you pick the columns from the JSON that you want. For example, I picked artwork URL 100. Okay, on here. So that means this URL here is being used. And I also have to specify what type of column it is. I say, hey, this is an image. So I pick formatter image. The title, I pick the field track name and it is an input filter and I wanna be able to edit it. It's even, editing is even enabled. Release, release date, formatter is date time. And I even specify here, great example for you. The input format is ISO and the output format is day, month, year. Why do I do this? Well, I don't want the time. You know, I don't want to, basically it was it, the, the release of Star Wars uh, was probably in the UK. So it was like here in the United States, it was probably um, around, um, basically if it was like um, six o'clock in the evening in the UK, it was probably lunchtime here in the United States. However, that is not relevant. You know, I only want the day, the month and the year. And this is why I say, hey, output format is this, input format is ISO. And for the genre, primary genre name as seen, the header filter is a list. That means I don't wanna be able to type anything in there, only the ones that are inside of the category. And I also say autocomplete and look up the values in there and I want to be able to clear it out to show all of them. And this is yet again an example of copied from the documentation so there is no real JavaScript that you have to write. The key thing to do is to assign the data to the data property of this tabulator component and you're done. I mean and you replace just shown in the first part the example table tag which is right here and then the table is rendered and that plays 
in your HTML and that's all it is. There is no more to it. There is, that's, that's all you have to do in order to show all that data inside of a grid. And you can, again, it's not bound to X data, but if you have your own web service tool, you can write a web service and immediately show the results in this control. There's no manual parsing necessary. And if you are in control of the backend, always form your responses like you need them on the front end, right? Why make it complicated for your front end? Format it directly as you need it. And then working with tabular really, really makes it easy to show this information. I hope you found this video interesting. This concludes the tabulator series with TMS Web Core. And if you want to read up on it, hopefully this link is also in the comments of this video. However, Holger's Code is a new website that I created, holgerscode.com. And on the tutorial section, you find written explanations of all the videos that I present for TMS. And I try to, by step by step, also add this for the backlog of all the videos that we did. And in addition, my blog will also move there. So be sure to sign up to the feed of that blog. So you go to the TMS Web Core data, table data with tabulator, and then you scroll down. Here's part one with the video link, all the code snippets that you can easily copy paste into your own application. And then here will also be part two, which you just saw. Um, with all the detailed uh, explanations, the tool TMS REST, site, REST Insight, where you can find that to browse, browse the Apple iTunes search API. And then here are all the explanations that I give in the video written down so you can easily access them without re-watching the whole video. Of course, there's also a link to my latest book, how you can order it easily, how you can find it in different stores all over the planet. and most important of all, source code. The source code is available on GitHub. You just click this link. And here's the source code for both examples, for both parts, for you easy to use in your versioning system or also download a zip and you're ready to go to reproduce this example for yourself at your own pace. Thank you so much for your interest in how it works with Hogger. See you soon. Take care.